Good afternoon again from Kiev, uh, and welcome uh, this time to the second of our panels on regional development, where we'll look at other local aspects of promoting Ukrainian growth and uh, prosperity. My name is uh, uh, Markian Belinsky. I'm Vice President uh, for Field Operations uh, for the Foundation here in Ukraine. And again, it's my pleasure to uh, introduce the moderator. Uh, Dr. Rusty Brooks administered programs at the uh, University of Georgia's Carl Vinston Institute of Governments International Center for 11 years, where he helped governments throughout the world work more effectively and responsibly. During his near, uh, nearly four decade career at the University of Georgia, Rusty worked extensively in international settings with both governmental and non-governmental entities on public administration and economic development policies and on promoting heritage and cultural tourism. He has worked on international development activities in over 40 countries, including extensively in Ukraine. Rusty also served as a policy consultant to the White House Rural Policy Office during the Reagan administration, as well as on the Southern Growth Policies Board under former President Bill Clinton. In 2012, Rusty was named a Walter Barnard Hill Fellow at the uh, University of Georgia for distinguished achievement in public service and outreach. Previously, in 1998, he had also been named a Salzburg Fellow for Rural Development. Uh, it, uh, finally, it would of course be remiss of me not to mention that Rusty was recently elected chairman uh, of the board at the US Ukraine Foundation. So, this, uh, the screen is yours now, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mark. And I appreciate those kind words. Uh, it's an indeed pleasure to welcome everyone to this session, uh, especially to welcome these panelists to the session. Uh, I uh, had the great privilege to uh, get involved in Ukraine through the generosity of the U.S. Ukraine Foundation back in the late 1990s through the Community Partnership Program, uh, which was an effort to link Ukrainian cities with comparable American cities. It was not a sister cities program. It was much more in depth than sister cities. And I had the great privilege of working directly with uh, my city here in the state of Georgia, Athens, and Kamenitsk Podilsky and Kamenitsky Oblast, uh, primarily because we're both university cities. But during those times too, I had the great good fortune to be involved in a lot of efforts to improve the economic development processes in, in Communist Podilsky. And uh, we've heard several discussions at a previous session of the day about one-stop shops and uh, uh, targeted resources that can, can come from Kyiv to the Oblast and to the cities in Ukraine. I, and I think probably those the most dramatic change I've seen in economic development in Ukraine over the past 25 years has been efforts such as uh, Ukraine Invest, uh, the successes that Oblast and cities in Ukraine are seeing now in terms of attracting forward direct investment. And that is the thing that I'm most proud of because the one thing that I greatly advocated for during my time when I was working in Ukraine was that we've got to have a greater effort to bring up the capacity and the capability of the Oblast and the cities to foster support and advocate market and promote themselves for economic development purposes and foreign direct investment. And I think the people that you'll meet today in this session, uh, the Oblast, the cities they represent are a great example that efforts in Ukraine now are being much more successful in making Ukraine a place to invest. Uh, and I'm happy that that's happened now for Ukraine. Today, we have a very interesting set of presenters uh, representing both Oblast level and then uh, municipal level economic development. Uh, it's my great good pleasure to have the opportunity to introduce them and to hopefully direct some uh, discussion that our panelists among ourselves, as well as those of you who are joining us online can engage in as well. I will say that uh, one of our one of our presenters, Mayor Dahl from uh, Mayor of Ternopil, he has a very important uh, event later that he'll have to join. I think that right now the, there's a major football soccer competition in Ternopil, and he's uh, has some official capacity that he'll, he'll have to join that uh, 
event in person later on. So I'm going to open up with him, but let me provide an introduction first. Serhi Nadal is currently the mayor of the Western Ukrainian city of Ternopil. He graduated from the Ternopil Commercial Institute in 1995 as a specialist in enterprise management. In 1997, he qualified in accounting and auditing at the Ternopil Academy of Public Management and graduated from there in 2001 with an MA in financial management. From 1994 forward, he worked in various positions in the Ternopil and Kalmanitsky Oblast tax administrations after which he became active in politics. Mr. Dudal was elected to the Ternopil Oblast Council in 2009 from the Savota party and was responsible for issues relating to regional socioeconomic policy, investment policy, and external economic relations. He was elected mayor of Ternopil in 2010. So without ado, Mayor Dudal, I turn it over to you. For uh, my team, it's been very important to attract foreign investment. We much uh, we put much effort into attracting investment, both internally and uh, from foreign sources, grants and uh, local business uh, monies. I can speak about the importance of infrastructural projects for our community because for two or three decades there have been, there's been very little investment into those, such as utilities, heating, uh, water, uh, running water system, etc. Street lights too. Every investor before they come and actually start a project, they look for a location uh, that um, has uh, proper uh, commu communications, proper uh, utilities, connections, and uh, good prospects. It was mentioned that. Of course, the government should be able to provide preferences for certain investors in order to bring such business in. We do offer certain preferences which local government can provide within its powers. We can do that. Our uh, regulations allow that to, for instance, agree, um, provide um, uh, land allocation, land parcel allocation, and uh, they can automatically receive a proper documentation for, for that, for those uh, rights. Each interested investor can uh, get access to information about those procedures. For investors that are going to create jobs, we talk about certain uh, benef additional benefits like helping those employees, children, to be placed at kindergartens, uh, musical schools, etc. Also helping them to get housing for the employees. Again, uh, land parcels allocation. And we invest our city's uh, monies to support an investor in uh, accommodating their infrastructural needs, such as road repairs, uh, street lights, uh, lines, etc. And this is what we do in order to attract investors. Of course, it's very important for us to do this as transparently as possible, uh, make it very public, and all the time we expand the amount of our electronic electronic services, online services, to make them more accessible for a potential investor. We understand that these are the times of so, uh, what we may call global competition. It's not just competition among uh, businesses, it's competition among communities of Ukraine. And we want to make sure that Ternopil will be able to offer better conditions than another community. So when an investor chooses among po uh, possible communities to invest in, they will surely, we want to make sure they will choose Ternopil. 
As the result, we are going to have new enterprises, new businesses, new jobs, and better uh, social infrastructure for the community. And uh, our social issues will be addressed that way as well. Uh, plus, there will be additional uh, sources of revenues for the city. So uh, we emphasize that we are open for all potential investors. We provide uh, financial uh, incentives for them, and I invite all interested parties to come and visit. Well, thank you, Mayor Nadal. Uh, since the mayor has to leave, would there be anybody have some questions for the mayor while we still have him uh, online with us? I, I, one thing I'd like to ask you, Mayor Nadal, if possible, would, it, would you be able to share with us some of the names of some of the companies that have located in Ternopil? Altogether, we have over 80 uh, such investors now, but to speak of the major ones, the biggest ones, the best known, I can mention the uh, company named Shredder, which uh, produces uh, lighting systems. And then the next, uh, the newest big investor is Monks. They are starting uh, to work in our industrial park where we allocated land for such investors with uh, jobs where we want to see certain kinds of manufacturing uh, projects that are attractive for the city. And Monks is now working to start such a project. These are two biggest ones because there are a number of smaller ones, those which are not internationally uh, known, but they also make their investments. All right. Are there other questions for Mayor Nadal? All right. Well, we'll still have him for a while longer. He doesn't have to leave yet. And so Mayor DeLaw will get you to sit by. We'll move to our next speaker. Olha Horb is the deputy head of the Dnipropetrovsk Oblast State Administration. She was educated at the Ukrainian State Chemistry Technology University and graduated as a specialist in organizational and economic management. Between 1998 and 2016, she worked extensively in the private commercial sector in Dnipropetrovsk and the Autonomous Republic of Crimea holding senior management positions with flagship Ukrainian countries such as Prima In 2016, she became an advisor to the Dnipropetrovsk Oblast State Administration, subsequently rising to her current position as deputy head. Ms. Orb, I turn it over to you. I think she's frozen. Ms. Orb, you're frozen and your mic's muted too. Uh, greetings to all of you. I'm very glad to uh, be able to speak at this um, meeting and uh, I'm glad to see that even from far away you uh, notice how much new positive development is happening in Ukraine and how uh, a new experience is uh, getting implemented. Uh, new best practices, uh, and I certainly look forward to an opportunity to meet with you all face-to-face, uh, -face. and uh, so I'll be, I won't have to show this uh, remotely. But now I would like to make this presentation in two formats. First, uh, to give you some uh, visual impressions of uh, how beautiful is uh, the land of Dnipro and uh, Ukraine at large. 
So I hope that by the time I finish you will fall in love with this land and you will come here to visit and then we will talk in a different way, more closely. So I would like to start this presentation with a, a video. So while I uh, while you're uh, watching it, I'll be telling you about the land of Dnipro. This is a land uh, with uh, ancient history, long time history. Our history started more than a hundred thousand years ago. Uh, our uh, territory is one of the twenty four provinces of Ukraine. We call it a land of contrasts. Here you can see how Ukraine's biggest industrial entities uh, grow up. At the same time, this is a land of uh, beautiful uh, green uh, nature with a lot of opportunities for recreation and relaxation. We are also a land of uh, great uh, history with a lot of uh, places of historical interest, of the Cossack history, as well as places where we can uh, gain, regain strength and uh, have recreation. These are powerful natural resources, 300 uh, lakes and 270 rivers. But here we live and we also work here. We have a very well developed uh, machine building and it's important uh, for our residents to have jobs and uh, make good income. Uh, accordingly, we have good development of local communities. Our, uh, our land, our territory uh, can boast modern infrastructure and modern human capital. We are also attractive for tourism because to begin with it is we are very accessible by air by uh, ships uh, by, by railroad by cars and uh, highways we are well connected to all uh, other locations our territory is attractive for investors and for so-called um, industrial tourism we also have, in addition to machine building, a lot of uh, metallurgy, uh, other areas of uh, industries, as well as agriculture. And like I mentioned, you can have a good time here uh, for recreation. We do a lot of exhibitions, festivals, big scale concerts. We are not afraid of organizing big scale projects, like for instance, the airplane uh, show where more than 50,000 visitors uh, come together and together we celebrate the Independence Day of Ukraine. We also do uh, children's uh, creativity festivals with uh, tens of thousands of children in our uh, province taking part. We would like to develop this further and have exchanges with colleagues in other regions. Also, our region has a lot of uh, people of talent. Our cultural tourism is active here all year round. We have 14 uh, theatres that uh, sh do uh, theatre shows, uh, symphonies, a modern uh, Italian organ in the, at the Academy of Music and an ancient uh, old-time organ in the chamber music uh, concert hall. In other words, anyone who is interested can find their own cultural niche here. We also can invite you for nice walks. Uh, sightseeing. Dnipro is the best city of the province and we are well known for the traditional arts here. Almost a 30 year long, uh, excuse me, almost 30 kilometer long uh, landmark uh, with a cultural uh, Jewish center, Menorah, which is uh, Europe's biggest uh, civil uh, complex 
with seven to uh, towers and you can see it in the video as well. Also I'd like to point out that we develop uh, uh, an area of major interest for that uh, has a lot of demand around the world. It's called industrial tourism. We develop uh, this particular area very actively, which means uh, sightseeing at factories that are still in operation on those that have worked for a long time. We also demonstrate, take tourists to places of um, traditional crafts, artisan craft. We have a space missile um, factory and space missile design center named Yuzhne. We also have other big modern industrial uh, facilities such as Interpipe, the piping industry uh, factory, also um, metallurgy uh, b businesses that uh, develop um, uh, iron ore quarries. And I want to tell you about a unique location where you can visit such industrial uh, uh, tourism trails. We have almost 80 of them. When you come here, you can visit seven operating mines. Some of them uh, exceed uh, 1,000 meters in depth. We also offer a very interesting uh, sightseeing tour to uh, iron ore quarries, which our tourists are interested in seeing. I'll tell you something interesting. One of those quarries has the area of six square, 600 square kilometers. It's three times more than Monaco, and its depth is several hundred meters. So if you put uh, the Eiffel Tower at the bottom there, you would not be able to see it uh, from above. Also, those uh, mines have underground lakes, which tourists can see. And there is an interesting uh, facility that's called ArcelorMittal Krivirich. Uh, it's uh, one of the world's biggest steel mills in operation, and you can come and visit it. This uh, factory has uh, 378 kilometers square miles, which is twice bigger than Brussels, the capital of the European Union. This uh, comparison gives you an idea of the scale of our uh, industrial facilities. But that's not the only kind of tourism we offer. We also feature, um, cultivate so-called patriotic tourism. Uh, I can remind you that Ukraine has been um, in a state of war on the borders with Russia and uh, we are not very far from there so we are um, developing this so-called patriotic tourism. We created Ukraine's only museum of um, this war. It includes two exhibits, one is indoors and one is outdoors. And uh, if you come here anytime, I'm very pleased that you are taking time to talk about our uh, territory and listen to our presentation. So most of all, I would like to emphasize that we would like to have you visit here so that you will see what our land is like and also we hope that you will stay here and we would be able to develop uh, pro new projects together, new plans and uh, organize uh, new investments. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, Ms. Orr. Very impressive. I, uh, one, one of the places I haven't been to in Ukraine is, to, is, is into your region. I look forward to getting there someday. What I'd like to suggest is since we've got our other speaker that has joined us, Let's finish with our other two speakers, and then we'll open it up for questions and for discussion among all our panelists. And uh, so what I'd like to move to next is our next speaker, Dmitro Kripak, is the head of the Kyiv Oblast Regional Economic Development Agency, whose responsibility is to attract jobs and investment to the region. 
Dimitra has over 25 years of leadership experience in the U.S., having helped attract investors to North Carolina and South Carolina, neighbors to me here in Georgia, as a manager of the Duke University Energy Initiative Economic Development Team. Prior to joining the Odessa Development Agency, he headed up the business of Visa Inc. in 17 markets and served as the CEO of Credo Bank and PKO Bank Polsky Group. He also worked at Rifleson Bank and as a strategy consultant at Oliver Wyman and KPMG. Dimitro has an MBA degree from the Wharton School of Business at the University of Pennsylvania. Mr. Pickup, I turn it over to you. Thank you. Well, thank you for the introduction, Rusty. Um, as a matter of fact, I, I lead uh, an economic development agency for Kiev Oblast, not Odessa Oblast. Okay. Just a small, <laughs> a small correction. Um, so let me first, um, um, you know, say a few words about the agency. Um, our objective is to bring new jobs and investment to the Kiev Oblast. Um, about a year and a half uh, ago, the then governor of the Oblast, Mr. Chernyshov, now he's the Minister of Regional Development, decided to revitalize the agency. Um, he invited me to transform it and implement global best practices. So I used my experience of attracting jobs and industry to North and South Carolina um, as a member of uh, Duke Energy's economic development team. And I believe we, we uh, were successful um, in, attract, in achieving our goals and attracting investors. Over the year, uh, we completed seven projects with uh, 1,200 jobs and $180 million uh, of investment. Um, the agency is absolutely politically neutral, and um, we have to ensure a continuity of support for investors, no matter what the changes in politics uh, take place. Um, nevertheless, currently, we are enjoying a really, really strong support and uh, personal engagement from the current government, Mr. Volodin. Uh, he personally in, gets involved in, uh, you know, helping investors locate in, uh, in, uh, in, in Kiev region and uh, address some of the issues they might face here. Uh, just a few success stories that we had here. Um, our agency worked with a foreign investor um, and helped him uh, expand in the uh, oblast. We consulted the client um, on the land acquisition and construction permitting process. Uh, we connected him to the local electric power provider. Uh, so, so um, you know, I, I wanted to make a, a, a small comment, um, you know, about the perception of, of the business climate in uh, Ukraine in general and uh, in uh, in Kiev Oblast particularly, uh, sometimes you know investors may complain about uh, you know certain actions of uh, law enforcement or or, or courts or whatever else. Uh, but my experience tells me that uh, in some cases, in actually many cases, uh, investors, particularly foreign investors, make a lot of mistakes in terms of you know documentation, in terms of uh, you know permitting, uh, in terms of uh, you know, just just a quick example. You know the investor didn't know that. Uh, it's not allowed to dig a, 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 you know, a, a hole in the ground more than two meters because under that two meters, there is a valuable soil kind of uh, layer. Um, so, so, you know, uh, and, and our agency, uh, you know, we have an expert who provides advice to investors how not to make mistakes. If you don't make those mistakes, uh, then your life here will not be any different from, you know, your life in any other country in the world. So, you know, yes, it's true that uh, sometimes, you know, the regulations are complex, but here we are, you know, uh, the agency and other, uh, you know, participants of the process uh, who are helping now investors not to make those mistakes. And, and, and uh, if they don't do them, uh, they will be very, very comfortable working in Ukraine and working in Kiev region particularly. Uh, we also helped a Ukrainian company from the south of Ukraine uh, to find the right uh, community and to find the industrial land uh, to build a river terminal and, and a warehouse for agricultural you know, products. Uh, these, are just a, these are just a few examples of uh, success stories. And uh, to, to finish my uh, you know, presentation, I'd like to talk about the advantages of key regions, you know, why uh, businesses should come here. Well, first of all, uh, we have the largest population in the country. Uh, close to 5 million people. It's uh, comparable in size to such countries as Ireland, Norway, Slovakia. So we are, you know, bigger than some of the uh, countries. We enjoy population growth. Uh, you know, many other regions in, in Ukraine, unfortunately, have declining population. We have population growth of 3% uh, over the past several years. Uh, you know, the city of Kiev, the capital is a magnet for people to come here for talent. 
Um, so, so we're growing. Uh, we are the largest market. Uh, we have $12 billion of annual retail sales here. And, and we have the largest workforce. We have 13% of total uh, workforce in, in, the, in Ukraine, uh, 12, uh, 13%, excuse me, 13%. We have excellent um, educational facilities. We have 71 colleges and universities uh, and they generate over 70,000 70, graduates a year of which 9,000 are in the IT field. So we have several clusters here in, uh, in Kiev and IT cluster is one of the strongest in the country. Uh, we have 49 vocational schools and they generate 6,000 uh, uh, technical graduates. So this is the workforce uh, that can uh, support any projects in industry, in manufacturing. Uh, of course, we have the best infrastructure in the country. Uh, you know, we, are, uh, we have two international airports, we have two major river ports, we have major highways, railroads, excellent quality, uh, and we are centrally located. Uh, Kiev Oblast is four or five hour drive, you know, to any uh, million plus city in Ukraine from Dnipropetrovsk, from Kharkiv, Odessa, Lviv. Uh, we are five hours away from the EU border and we are only four and a half hours drive from Odessa seaport. Um, so we're, we're essentially located. And of course, quality of life. Uh, we have, you know, the capital city, we have eight international accredited schools, English language, German, French, um, kindergartens, you know, in, in, in different languages, Japanese, German, English. Uh, we have 15 private medical centers. Uh, we have American medical center. We have uh, uh, Swiss and German and American dental uh, clinics. Uh, we have three international level sports arenas, uh, international competition, soccer, uh, basketball, uh, anything. Uh, we have two ma major opera houses. So um, it's, a, it's a great combination of, uh, you know, um, uh, workforce potential of, of talent and quality of life and, and potential to grow your business here. Um, so anybody, you know, who would like to join, uh, uh, you know, us here and uh, build business, uh, welcome. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kipek. I, I just want to interject right here. Uh, you, you just heard a classic U.S. model of economic development presentation. It's obvious that 25 years he spent in South Carolina, North Carolina with Duke Energy Company has uh, provided him the basis to make those comments and make that pitch for Kiev that he just made. I don't know how many of you of our Ukrainian friends might know it or not, but uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, North South Carolina. Carolina in particular, one of the most, most capable places in terms of attracting foreign direct investment. And they've done it for many years. And North Carolina was probably a Silicon Valley before there was a Silicon Valley. Uh, and I think that Mr. Kripak just uh, demonstrated, if you want to be involved in economic development, you've got to talk about the things he talked about. He talked about quality of life. He talked about the infrastructure, proximity to markets, the labor market. Those are the important things if you're going to be in economic development at the Oblast level, the municipal level. He just gave a kind of a uh, succinct lesson in what a true economic development person does. And I uh, I was very impressed with Mr. Kripak with what you said, and I hope we'll come back to you. I'm sure people have got questions for you uh, when we reach the end of this thing, but let me go to our uh, last speaker on the panel now. Uh, Roman Horshian is the head of the Department of International Relations at Odessa Oblast State Administration. Having received an international law degree in 2013 from the Tara Shevchenko Kiev State University. And Mr. Horshian is a qualified international lawyer he has received approximately 20 domestic and international awards and commendations for his work in Ukrainian domestic and international youth initiatives. For someone so young, he also has an impressive resume of student and party political activity culminating in a 2014 independent bid for a seat in the Ukrainian parliament. Since 2010, Mr. Orshin has worked in the commercial field in an advisory capacity to numerous local and national level politicians on various issues before being appointed to his current position early this year. I'll turn it over to Mr. Horshin now. Uh, greetings to all those listening uh, to us. I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to speak here. 
Unfortunately, uh, it is uh, regrettable that uh, we are talking online, but I hope we'll have an offline meeting very soon. You have said uh, correctly that at this time I'm in charge of the International Relations Office of the Odessa Province Government, but at the same time I'm working on, uh, a, reno um, on a reform of this office. So, what I want to speak primarily about today is uh, the work of the investment agency of the Odessa regional government. As an institution, this agency, I really liked the previous speaker's presentation. His experience is commendable. I must uh, mention that I'm not really the uh, chief of that agency. I'm the chief of the uh, oversight committee for that agency. We were not able to create, rather people before me were not able to create such an agency uh, in the course of four years, but I persuaded my bosses and we took a slightly different course of action than other uh, regional governments in Ukraine. What we are creating is an agency of regional development as a project office for the region. So its lead driver would be the investment office, which we already have established. So currently we are doing a pilot project jointly with the Office of the President of Ukraine. Essentially it's a new step in investment policy of Ukraine. I came to investment uh, administration uh, for, with a background in uh, commercial investment market and I want to speak about the problems that exist in this field in Ukraine. Number one, is an absence of adequate internationally uh, acceptable uh, proposals. I come to Odessa province and potential investors contact me or maybe one of you contact me uh, one of you contacts me and unfortunately I do not have a proposal that is uh, prepared according to international standards and I'm sure that this is a typical picture for Ukraine at large. I really like the model uh, the experience of uh, Ecuador even uh, 2014 when I attended a study program at Colombia I met uh, counterparts from Ecuador and uh, they described uh, how they did it in one year they were able to use certain tools and increase direct foreign direct investments about nines fold and in fact they were not able to change any uh, major indicators such as crime and corruption etc but the thing is that uh, at, in the market at the market any commodity any uh, product has a buyer this includes uh, investment opportunities in Ukraine so you have to look for that particular customer that particular buyer and you have to know how to present the op to the opportunity in the right way so what we have done is we started this agency together with national donors and the Ministry for uh, Regional Development and we were able to obtain a very attractive location for it. It's the former uh, building of uh, the regional bank. Uh, who knows uh, the location? It's right in Deribasovskaya Street and it will serve as the basis for this chief investment office of the region. At this time what we are doing is uh, providing investment passports for uh, for uh, land parcels and uh, other um, objects that uh, can serve as investment uh, project locations. Which investment project? It is clear that most of our territorial communities cannot present uh, that uh, particular object according to international standards, but we are currently negotiating with international consultancies that will come 
to us in Odessa and will help us uh, shape the proposals on those particular uh, objects and assets and uh, we are currently negotiating such work with uh, Deloitte we will create a catalog and uh, those uh, developed concepts ideas will uh, be confirmed through our catalog and that way investment uh, potential investors will uh, see the authority and uh, trust uh, of those uh, major international consultancies uh, who will kind of back up those uh, proposals. It doesn't matter what we tell them about the territory at large, about our human uh, capital and education levels, but we can t talk to them about specific um, assets and uh, ideas of what an investor, an investor could do in that uh, asset. I personally believe that uh, investment policy can be successful by creating such investment products and now that we are under the pandemic uh, restrictions and unfortunately in some uh, developmental aspects we lag behind uh, best countries of the world this is our homework to be done uh, presenting those investment products so after the pandemic when the spring of economic activity is going to go loose and push forward economic uh, development around the world that's when each of us will be able to go and have those meetings our uh, counterparts overseas will get those tools what to propose and Ukrainian embassies will be able to make um, to use the um, materials that we have prepared in their meetings as well as our governor when he or she travels abroad uh, for such meetings so at this time we are not rejecting the projects that are underway but this investment office we believe should be some kind of a government consulting company that will put together everything related to an investment uh, an investment project an investor can come and sign an agreement with this office and this office will undertake all the activities related to paperwork uh, land parcels, registration, etc. This age, this uh, office will serve as their representative. Thank you, Mr. Warsham. I, uh, I want to uh, take the prerogative to point out that there was one point that Mr. Warsham made that I think is very important when you're thinking about attracting investment, whether it's foreign direct investment or domestic investment, but that you're selling a product. The product is your locality, your oblast, your city your region. And sometimes we have to think about the investors as the buyers, and we have to make sure we tailor the product to fit that buyer. And I think Mr. Gorshin pointed that out very well. Uh, I'll give you a quick little example of uh, here in my state, in Georgia, is that uh, one of the things that allows Georgia to be successful, they have a program called Quick Start. And what Quick Start is, and, and Mr. Kripak mentioned vocational and technical education institutions is very critical in uh, providing a labor force. But Georgia will find out, for example, the largest uh, Kia manufacturing has its largest automobile production facility in North America here in Georgia. And when the negotiations started between the state of Georgia and Kia, Georgia went to the location that uh, Kia had picked and established a center to quickly train automobile workers because Georgia had no history of automobile production. We had a GM plant in Atlanta, but the Kia plant was a couple hours drive from there. And it had been several years ago. But the state of Georgia quickly went in, set up a training facility, trained the workforce to allow Kia to be able to have production workers to walk right out of the training facility onto the workshop floor very quickly. A lot of industry really appreciate that training opportunity that the state of Georgia provides. 
But that's another critical factor in marketing your product, setting your product, and attracting the buyer. I'm sure some of our listeners have questions for our participants. I think that the mayor probably has uh, left us, but we've got three excellent speakers here. Does anyone have a question they'd like to ask? If not, let me ask one. Uh, as I pointed out uh, early, when I first started in Ukraine, uh, there was not a lot of uh, local government, regional government efforts in economic development. They weren't being very successful. There was not a lot of support structure there to help them make place. Speaking to the three of you, Ms. Orb, Mr. Gorshin, and Mr. Kripak, what would you say has changed most in Ukraine in the last five years or so that helps you now to be more successful in attracting investment into your region, your city, your oblast? Any of you, any of the three of you? Uh, well, I can start uh, if you don't mind, uh, Rusty. Um, I, I think uh, decentralization reform was a great success and uh, you know you have to follow the money to, to understand you know uh, you know how and why things change. So now um, you know sixty percent of uh, labor tax remains in communities. So communities uh, uh, became aware, uh, very aware uh, in this new environment that jobs give them uh, revenue, and they can spend this revenue to invest into infrastructure, into quality of life, you know, to improve the product, to attract more investors. And, and this is a spiral that takes you up and up and up and up. So, um, and we already have in Kiev Oblast, we already have smart communities that have transformed and, and they're, you know, thinking about, um, you know, building campuses, uh, you know, similar to Resource Triangle in uh, North Carolina. And, and you're familiar with that, you know, building, uh, office space outside of Kiev city, you know, outside of the, you know, the capital. Uh, so they would like to attract investors. So I think this decentralization reform, uh, successful completion of this reform, and the fact that the, you know, the communities understand the value of investors. Now they understand why they should fight, you know, they should compete. And this competition is great. You know, competition is the driver of, of, you know, quality of success. And now we have communities competing. We have Oblis competing. And I, I think it's awesome. It's great. You know, I, I think that changed a lot. Yeah. Mr. Orsham, Ms. Orb, anything you'd like to add? Uh, Doc. Uh, yeah. Yes, I would like to add a few words too. Just add a few words to what uh, my colleague has said in the response. Personally, as someone who was born at the time when Ukraine became independent. Someone who has traveled around the world and seen other places, having given thought to our history, I want to point out that we are a young country and we have dynamic uh, development, dynamic growth and change. There are many issues with the government of the country, with the mindsets of uh, all of us. However, I think we are on the right track. At this time, speaking of uh, the basic uh, units of uh, local government, after the reform was implemented, we have created some kind of a market situation. We cannot say it's totally a fair market, but I know examples, uh, and my province has more such communities than any other one. We have 91 uh, newly established territorial communities, and some of them were originally uh, considered to be favorites, but then others with uh, less uh, advantageous starting conditions were able to achieve more. One good example is the city of Ismail in the province of Odessa. For you to understand, they have 300 million hryvnas for development in their budget, of which only 100 million are the monies from a uh, local government uh, uh, budget. 200 million is monies from grants, 
such as uh, grant projects uh, from the European Union and because they understand if you have a million hryvnias you can spend it for some for some day-to-day -day needs like uh, build some new road but if you invest some of that money into a project that will generate more revenues for you a year or two years later this can be a grant uh, application writing team or a team that assists investors and such teams require investing effort and resources those communities which understand this they f ultimately become more successful in Odessa province you would say you would expect that those communities which have seaports are more advantageous but then there is Staro uh, which is uh, a hundred miles away from the Russian uh, troops in uh, Transnistria and no access to the sea and they were able to implement very good investment projects with monies from Dutch and other West European investors they have built some new windmills uh, and they speak about the social advantages of such investments because each of those creates basically it's a village uh, these investors do help to develop uh, social uh, assets for the community, better lighting, etc. So I think uh, we are on the right track as far as decentralization is concerned and uh, those who don't do anything make no mistakes. Of course, there are things to be improved, but I think we are uh, evolving towards a modern, uh, well-developed country that will be in the front line of uh, international community. And I have faith that the Ukrainian diaspora will support us as well. But we should not just sit idly and ask for help. We, how, we, on the contrary, we need to make an effort and show that we are ready to take some burden on ourselves. And I would like to add also that changes are taking place in Ukraine, in the government of Ukraine. The people who work in government offices are changing. There are many new young uh, people who work at government offices who not only have had previous experience of uh, government service but also working in the private sector. Our current governor, Mr. Reznichenko, is one good example. Almost all of us uh, have worked for private, uh, the private sector before. We understand that uh, budget uh, how budget is made and uh, we understand revenues as well as uh, expenses we understand the problems of private businesses in our province who come to talk to us about those problems our doors are open uh, for them and uh, the province government is open almost 24 7 and we understand we not only need to talk to them but we need to focus on specific goals, specific objectives and uh, control how these goals are achieved and go with the investor step by step towards implementation of their projects. We understand that an investor comes uh, with uh, an investor is not a tourist they come not just to look around they want to uh, carry out their project and certainly uh, make some profit and we understand that if an investor has an opportunity to reach that major primary objective we at the same time will be able to achieve our objectives an investor who organizes a business on our territory they'll be paying taxes here and uh, we will be able to use those revenues for other um, infrastructural development uh, social uh, infrastructure uh, 
consumer infrastructure and we will also learn uh, gain new experience so what matters is to change the uh, type of the model of governance in Ukraine we are getting to be more open and we are ready to work together and implement such projects for joint benefit thank you Thank you. Thank you. One, one quick, quick thing I'd like to ask, uh, speaking from outside, uh, think of me as a foreign direct investor, perhaps. You know, one of, the, one of the great challenges always to someone who looks at a country like Ukraine is where do you start? You know, where's my first point of contact to have a successful effort to consider whether I want to choose Ukraine or Ternopil or Kiev or Odessa or wherever I might want to choose for a location. Has the process, do you think, the three of you think that the process now has reached a point where potential investors, especially foreign investors, clearly understand how the process in Ukraine works? They know where the first place is to stop. And does that first place, whatever that place might be, if one exists, does it work effectively with each of you and others like you to make sure that investors have a very good experience if they come into Ukraine looking for the opportunity to invest in Ukraine? Any of my three speakers? Well, um, I, I think uh, if I talk about our agency, uh, it's, it's pretty new um, and it has to get the word out. Uh, we have a new website. Uh, you know, unfortunately, we do not have a database of land plots and industrial properties. We're working on, on it. Uh, but Ukraine Invest, I think Ukraine Invest has a good brand. Uh, so people can go there and uh, we partner with Ukraine Invest so they can, uh, you know, uh, 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 have a competition among us, you know, about different obligations so that we respond to the RFIs or RFPs of, of potential projects. Um, as, you know, in some cases, investors go to the Oblast administration, to the governor's office and governor's office sends them, uh, you know, to us and, and we'll be happy to connect the investors to the other parts of the process. In other words, uh, you need electricity, we have a partnership with electric utility. You know, we'll get you in touch with the right people. You don't understand how taxation works, we'll get you in touch with the tax people. You know, uh, we will make sure that you get the right engineering and construction company that knows what to do and what not to do. Because, you know, uh, in some cases, as I said, you know, investors, particularly foreign investors, they come here and they do not hire the right consultants. You know, so they make lots of, a lot of mistakes and then they get in trouble and then they say, well, well, you know, legal system in Ukraine is broken. Well, you know, if, as I said before, if you don't make those mistakes, you don't experience any trouble here at all. So you, need, you just need to spend a little bit of money hiring the right, you know, construction, permitting consultants who know the process and who can get you through this. So we can, uh, you know, we can connect uh, uh, foreign investors to all these, uh, you know, players. Uh, we're about to reach the end of our time. I'd just like to add a couple of points, uh, hopefully, to, that it might be of value to my Ukrainian colleagues and counterparts. Uh, and I think Mr. Kripak could speak to understand exactly what I'm talking about. I think one of the critical factors that also can be very important in Ukraine is providing an organization that brings all the economic development people together within an association where you learn from each other, you talk to each other, you share experiences, you get ready for the next opportunity, you learn what others are doing well, you learn what's not going well, and you, you tweak your little portfolio so to help you make you more successful. And the second point I'll leave you with, and I think, again, Mr. Kubak can speak to this. I think one of the greatest underutilized resources in economic development are universities, yeah. often because universities don't think of themselves as a catalyst for economic development. They think of themselves as typically as a university. We train students. We do our research. But in the United States, for example, Mr. Kubak mentioned the research triangle in North Carolina, which brought together Duke and North Carolina and North Carolina State University. Uh, here in Georgia, we use Georgia Tech University and University of Georgia together. Silicon Valley uses Stanford and others. Universities can be a phenomenal resource 
in helping not only attract investment, to, but to maintain investment and to create research that really assists those industries that come in to be more successful. I don't think you could think that Google and some of the other big companies in the US, if you don't think they've been benefited from a university, you don't understand how economic development truly operates. Yeah. But I wanna thank all of our speakers. I wanna thank all of our participants that have listened in. I think this is a great indication that Ukraine is a place to strongly consider for investment now. I uh, look forward to having the opportunity to meet each of you at some point in time, uh, back in Ukraine in person at some point in time and see how we could uh, benefit. I think there's great opportunities between the United States and Ukraine for supporting each other, working with each other and building strong industries and strong businesses across each other. And I want you to know too that the US Ukraine Foundation stands ready to help you in any way that we can as we move forward. So thank you for your participation. And I look forward to the next opportunity we can have to work together. Thank you. And I encourage all of you to look at your little chat box. Several of you have got some questions that people are sending you, you can answer them directly as well. So thank you. I think we're signing off now.